Yep, yeah, what's good job ladies, gentlemen, kings, queens, how y'all doing, how y'all feeling today? We got killer thinks he got away until cops find this clue. The case of Nia Wilson. This is brought to us by Unseen, you know what I'm saying? Let's see what we got here. Ah, 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 ah. Damn new slapper. Let's get some of that, shall we? Pay attention to the man in the white and gray hoodie. He walks off the train, pulling his oh hood down gosh, and taking off his sunglasses. Shit, he looks around, and then he reaches down, pulling something out of his pant leg. He quickly covers it up with his sweatshirt, and no one else in the busy train station has noticed. 20 minutes earlier, 18-year-old Nia Wilson got on the train with two of her sisters, Tashaya and Latifa. Security cameras recorded the man following them and sitting down nearby. Man, For multiple stops, off, he watched them behind his sunglasses, but he didn't approach them. Around 9.35 p.m., Nia, Tashaya, and Latifa got off the train to transfer, and he walked close behind them. The sisters called their dad to let him know they should be back home soon, and they waited for the train doors to open. But just moments later, outside the station, a police officer's body cam records the man running past. He points yeah, them up to the platform, goofy. telling them someone was attacked. The cops rush to the scene to help. Then, surveillance video shows the same man at a bus stop, after getting off the bus and away from the security cameras, he disappears. He thought he got away, but when police review this footage, they will find the crucial mistake he made during his escape that will ultimately lead to his capture and avenge the sister's attack. Fuck it's it, July goofy. 22nd, 2018. Clown. Around 9.45 p.m., the girl's dad gets a frantic call from his daughter, Tashaya. I couldn't understand what she was saying. All I could recognize her saying was Bart. I figured maybe they got in a little skirmish with somebody on board. Unsure of what he'll find, he rushes to the car right away and drives to the MacArthur BART station or Bay Area Rapid Transit. All he knows is that his girls are in trouble, but what he sees there is worse than he could ever imagine. When I got there, I see a bunch of ambulance and police. I see them loading the teeth in the ambulance. Mm. I see blood dripping down her arm, and I ask her what happened. She just said, go check on Nia. I turn around, I run up the stairs at Bart, and I see my daughter's body. <sighs> it's the hardest thing I ever experienced in my life, <laughs> seeing my baby dead. It's impossible for Nia's dad to wrap his head around what he's seeing. In less than three minutes from when she was stabbed in the neck, Nia has died. Her dad also has the heartbreaking task of calling her mom, Alicia. When she hears what happened, Alicia is shattered. In disbelief, she leaves her home in Sacramento and heads for Oakland right away. It was like the longest, quietest, because you know I kept on waiting on them to call back and say she okay. <laughs> While they're trying to process the attack, Nia and Tashaya's sister, Latifa, is fighting for her life at the hospital after getting stabbed, too. Her family is left in shock, wondering who could have attacked them and why. Yeah, I'm, I'm just trying to figure bozo. out, like, do I know him from somewhere? A targeted do we attack. Do have an interaction with him in any way, shape, or form? Because who is this? And why did he target us? I just felt like rage. This is the parents' worst nightmare. That's my baby girl laying up there. I want justice for my daughter. Even though it happened in a crowded place, the man was able to get away, right past security and police officers. No one knows who or where he is, but security cameras in and around the train station captured the attack, the moments leading up to it, and the man fleeing afterwards. And as investigators review the footage, there's a breakthrough. In the video, the man can be seen inside a nearby parking structure, leaving his backpack behind before running out to the bus stop. Within hours of the attack, Dumbass. police find the bag, it has several personal items in it, allowing Dumb them to fuck. identify the man, 27-year-old John Lee Cowell. When investigators look at his records, they find he's a convicted felon out on parole. In the past, he's been convicted of assault with a deadly weapon and armed robbery. There doesn't seem to be any connection between him and the Wilson family, but there's one more hope for details about the attack. Nia's sister, Latifa, who's coming to at the hospital. I remember pulling up to Highland. And from then on, it was kind of a blur. And then I seen my brother, then my dad come in. And I'm like, where's Nia? And he hesitated. 
And my dad ended up telling me, and that's when I tried to get out the bed. And my brother was like, don't get up, don't get up. Latifa learns what happened to Nia, and with her killer on the loose, the heartbroken family is desperate for answers. Still recovering from her own injuries, Latifa tells them about the events earlier that night. Just hours before the attack, Nia, Latifa, and Tashaya were visiting family. Their aunt Teresa had been diagnosed with a terminal illness, and the family wanted to have a celebration of life while she could still spend time with them. They went to the celebration, and afterwards, around 9 p.m., they got to the Concord BART station, heading back home to Oakland. As soon as the man saw them on the escalator to the platform, he targeted them. The girls waited about 15 minutes for the train. Security footage shows him keeping an eye on them the whole time, planning his attack. When they walked towards the doors, the stranger put on a hoodie, grabbed his backpack, and followed them. He entered the train, sitting down near the sisters. For multiple stops, he watched them behind his sunglasses, but he didn't approach them. When the sisters reached MacArthur Station around 9.35, they moved to step off the train to transfer, and he followed. Tashaya got on the next train first. Then, a woman with a baby in a stroller started to back out through the doors, and Latifa and Nia waited on the platform. She don't see us because she's backing up, but the baby like this, that Nia, and Nia, hi baby. And me and Nia proceeded to walk onto the bar train, but all you hear is, and Nia flung forward. And before I know I could turn back to me, and that's when Nia screamed my name. I see Nia, it was like she tripped. I was in shock. I didn't know what to do at that moment. But all of a sudden, Tashaya saw blood. Nia was stabbed twice in the neck, and Latifa, who was standing next to her on the platform, was stabbed too before the attacker fled. The doors had closed, and then they had reopened. And then I started screaming, trying to go find help. I believe an officer came and talked to me. I would just like, go help my sister, just make sure she's okay. The woman with the stroller quickly threw her baby's blanket over Nia's neck, and Latifa pressed it against her, desperately trying to slow the bleeding and save her sister. And all I could think of is like, apply pressure. I'm not knowing if I'm hurting her. I'm not knowing if I'm making it. And then I turned around and the security guard just grabbed me. It was like, you've been stabbed too. The security guard pulled her away, but Latifa didn't care about her own injuries. All she could think about in that moment was her sister. I still feel that guilt of, I couldn't save her. She just yelled my name, Tifa, Tifa, Tifa. And what did you say to her in those final moments as you were with her? I love her and we're gonna get through this. And I said, I got you, baby, I got you. You're my baby sister. Latifa and Tashaya would do anything to catch the man who took their little sister away from them. Before her death, Nia had worried about the possibility that she or her loved ones might someday be attacked solely because of their race. She had told her family that if something like this ever happened to her, she wanted them to keep fighting to hold the attacker accountable. Now, facing Nia's fears coming true, her family refuses to let her killer get away with it. Nearly 12 hours after the attack, there's renewed hope of bringing the man to justice when police share his photo and information with the public. He is a violent felon who is currently on parole, and we currently have an active arrest warrant for his arrest for the murder of Nia. But when I tell you all my brothers, sisters, cousins, everybody was looking for him. News spreads quickly, and the residents of Oakland do all they can to help in the search. The man was a complete stranger to the whole family, and they worry that it was a racially motivated attack. While police recovered the footage and backpack within a few hours, it took them nearly 12 hours to release the man's information, and people feared that her killer wouldn't be caught if they didn't bring more attention to it themselves. Posts about Nia spread across social media with the hashtag, Say Her Name, which started as a campaign to bring awareness to black women and girls who were victims of police brutality. As the movement grew, it was used to bring more attention to victims of anti-black violence. Outrage builds, and around 1,000 members of the community gather at the train station for a vigil for Nia, pushing to get her story heard, honoring her and demanding justice. Even with so many eyes looking out for the man who killed Nia and tried to kill Latifa, it seems like he might have vanished. But during the vigil, police get an anonymous call that changes everything. The caller says they're on a BART train, and they recognize someone on the train with them as the man they've been looking for, John Cowell. 
The train is headed right towards MacArthur Station, the scene of the crime, and where the vigil is being held. Police don't know if the man is aiming to hurt more people, but they race to stop him before he has a chance. They wait at MacArthur Station for the train to arrive, hoping to catch him by surprise. Then, the train gets there, and the doors open. Officers look everywhere, but they don't see him. However, at the nearby Pleasant Hill Station, around 20 minutes away, officers search the train for him too. This time, they find the man, right in the middle of the doorway. He doesn't put up a fight or try to run, and officers arrest him without incident. Less than 24 hours after the attack, the manhunt has come to an end. But while the man seems cooperative in this footage, he still has a plan to try to escape justice. In February of 2020, John Lee Cowell goes on trial. He has a history of mental illness, and he pleads not guilty by reason of insanity. When he testifies, he leans into it, saying he believed the sisters were aliens who kidnapped his grandmother. He just made a mockery out of it, like the things he was talking about. Mm -hmm. Up there because he wanted to play crazy. At one point, I intended to play the video to demonstrate that he knew what he was doing. He started screaming, yelling, cussing at me, telling me that I knew he was innocent and simply disrupting the courtroom. Even after the judge repeatedly warns him to stop, he continues his rant cursing at the prosecutor and gets removed from the courtroom. The security footage from the night of the stabbing makes it clear he had a plan to attack and escape, even having a backup outfit to change into afterwards. He targeted the sisters instead of anyone else at the station, and the prosecution considers charging Cowell with a hate crime as well. There were many women and people who entered into the BART platform. He did not focus on any of them. As soon as he saw three young African-American women, he fixated on them, and every indication, every angle of the surveillance makes that very clear. While he was in custody, he went out of his way to engage an African-American deputy and proceeded to call her lots of racial slurs as well. There's no doubt in my mind that the assault was racially motivated. You killed her because of her skin. You didn't kill her for anything else. But with how difficult it would be to prove it was a hate crime, District Attorney Butch Ford recommends seeking premeditated murder and the special circumstance of lying in wait because he watched and followed them onto the train before attacking at the station. The family agrees, hoping to send him to jail for the rest of his life. And as Ford reviews the phone calls Cowell made while in custody, he makes a breakthrough. Mr. Cowell is happy to speak to his mental health caregivers because Mr. Cowell had mental health issues. There's no disputing that. But he also was forthcoming that he needed to stop taking his medication so that he could appear more crazy when the trial started. I think it was an absolute show. During the trial, he tries to play up the idea that he can't control himself and doesn't know what he's doing. But the judge isn't fooled by his antics, ruling that he was sane at the time of the attack. John Cowell is convicted of the murder of Nia Wilson, the attempted murder of her sister Latifa, and the special circumstance of lying in wait. He is sentenced to life in prison without parole. With him behind- EAT MY DICK, NIGGA! FUCK YOU! Give a fuck about none of that shit, nigga. Fuck about that insanity. Give a fuck about none of that mental health shit. Eat a dick. Yeah, you got mental health issues, alright? You bitchin' ass nigga. Yeah, you do. You can have that bullshit. You can have that bum ass excuse. All the fuck you want to. You can play that shit up in court. Eat a dick. Don't nobody care about none of that shit. Man, it got me about to break something in this motherfucker, man. You gotta be fucking crazy. You really gotta be fucking crazy. Are you fucking kidding me? Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Man, get the fuck out of here with that shit. Get the fuck out of my face. Bunch of bullshit. Man, if I heard any, any, any sentence lighter. If I heard anything lighter than that shit. Man. 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 Run that motherfucker back. Ruling that he was sane at the time of the attack, John Cowell is convicted of the murder of Nia Wilson, 
the attempted murder of her sister Latifa, and the special circumstance of lying in wait, he is sentenced to life in prison without parole. With him behind bars for the rest of his life, Nia's family can finally start to move on with theirs. Spend the rest of his life in prison. That's how I really do justice or serve. And I know Nia smiling down on her family. <laughs> All her loved ones, the community, I know she can rest in peace. But while her family knows the man won't be able to hurt anyone again, it's a bittersweet moment. Now that the trial is over, they struggle to move on, grieving the tragic loss and reality of life without Nia. It's still a shock and overwhelming. Parts of me don't want to believe what's going on and parts of me have to face reality. It was just something that I couldn't believe, you know. I couldn't sleep, couldn't eat. Mess around and had a stroke. I don't speak too clear. I have limited use of my right side. While it's a long, healing journey, Nia's family members each have their own ways of finding the strength to keep going. My dogs keep me up. We have a husky. She very spoiled and she made me beautiful. take her out for walks. She keep me going, she's my therapy. Nia's sister still grapple with the guilt of surviving the attack, but with the help of therapy, meditation, and loved ones, Tashaya and Latifa are able to find themselves again. They know Nia would do anything to make them happy, and they see how her story spreads, impacting people across the country. The community comes together because of her, with hundreds of people showing up to her funeral. She was dressed in gold and white, had a white casket. They gave her a carriage ride, released doves. It was beautiful. The name Nia comes from the Swahili word purpose. Nia's purpose lives on through others after her death. She was passionate about fighting for equal rights. She constantly put others ahead of herself, spreading kindness and compassion wherever she went. When I think of Nia, I think of sunshine, big, bright, beautiful smile. That was my baby, like a sister's love can never be defined. Nia was very close with her friends and family, and she touched the lives of many near and far. Tributes continue to pour in across social media, with friends, strangers, and celebrities bringing attention to her story. NBA star Steph Curry hosts a high school basketball showcase, and he dedicates the game to Nia, raising over $20,000 for her family. Her school also honors her at what was supposed to be her graduation. The class of 2018, is not complete without one more graduate. I'm very proud. This is an achievement that me and my daughter sat down and spoke of several times, and it's so heartbreaking that she's not here to experience this for herself. Nia loved music and dancing, and she <clears throat> dreamed of having her own dance studio one day. She also thought of becoming an EMT or paramedic, or even working in criminal justice. She always wanted to help people. And in 2019, her family created the Nia Wilson Foundation, dedicated to providing resources such as mental health counseling, homeless outreach, self-defense classes, and employment opportunities for young men and women. Nia's family thinks of her every day, working to honor her memory and continue her mission to make the world a better place. I always say, Nia, you make me a better person. I carry my daughter's name with a heavy weight. So whatever I do, I think about her because I can't feel her in no type of way. I think Nia wants to be remembered how she loved people, how she cared for people, her passion for people and rights for everybody. Me and my daughters and the rest of us will see this through. We will make it even though it's very hard and it's something that we'll think about for the rest of our lives. We're going to make it. We're going to make it. <clears throat> Man. I might got to block this channel, bro. I don't even know what the fuck I was thinking even being over here, yo. I'm not going to lie. And my bad. You know what I'm saying? You don't even deserve that. Shout out to Unseen. You know what I'm saying? Man, these type of videos really be like... These bitches really, like, shift my vibe for the whole, like, I'm gonna need to, I'm gonna need to do something after this shit to get my vibes up, I ain't gonna lie. I, th I think exactly what I'm about to do, I'll take me a cool shower, you know what I'm saying, bump some music, 
fucking shut my stream cuz man when I buzz down I just need you know what I'm saying man I ain't got much to say this shit that's I was at a loss of words the whole fucking video I heard of this shit before but I don't know why just watching this shit right now really got me man I ain't gonna lie Ain't no excuse to racism. I don't give a fuck. I don't care. Um, if motherfuckers want to play off stereotypes and 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 you know, what I'm saying that's one thing, but to go out your way and do some life changing shit for the sake of of racism, I'll never understand that shit. I'll never like. Man, R.P. You know what I'm saying? R.P. Nia Wilson. Um, condolences to her, her family. Um, hope they. You really cannot like. Ain't no coming back from that shit. Ain't no healing. Like, like I can't speak for other people, but in my head, I'm just really sitting here thinking like, motherfuckers say that shit all the time. Hope you can heal. Blah blah blah. All this. You know what I'm saying? But realistically, like, I don't even want to put that in the air, so I ain't gonna say all that. But, yeah, no, nah, I, I just can't imagine this shit. I cannot imagine a world where you bounce back from that. Like, I'm glad, you know what I'm saying, they, they did what they did with the situation, but it shouldn't have to take that. It shouldn't have to take no shit like that happening for people don't want to be different, people don't want to step up, people don't want to do anything, it, it, it should not take that for anybody to move any different, human beings should not even, like, I'm not about to sit here fucking rambling, um, I'm about to go reclaim my vibes is what I'm about to do, uh, hey man, uh, Appreciate y'all for tuning in, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to Unseen, again, you know. Links in the description getting soon. Y'all stay safe, man. Do right by people. Be great, you know what I'm saying? Be good, be kind, you know. Shit don't cost a damn thing, son. But anyways, man, y'all take it easy. Good boop, 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 boop. Good boop.